In this lecture, we are going to discuss the boot process. So what are the steps to a fully booted system? Well, the BIOS is executed directly from ROM, read-only memory. That is, the actual BIOS chip itself is getting read from and executed in real time. The BIOS loads our operating system bootloader into address 0x7c00. Now obviously this is hexadecimal uh, number by here. So if you convert that to decimal, then that's the decimal value. The BIOS will then execute our bootloader, which will then load the kernel. And then obviously our kernel would load um, all the other essential pieces of our operating system. So that, that's it in a nutshell. Let's, let's go into a bit more detail. So first things first, what is a bootloader? Well, a bootloader is basically a small program that is responsible for loading the kernel of an operating system. Now, the operating system developer will generally write this bootloader himself. Microsoft have their own bootloaders, for example. Linux has Grub. So the bootloaders, they're generally small programs and they're simply responsible for loading the operating system's kernel. So when the computer first boots, we're in a compatibility mode called real mode. And real mode only gives us access to one megabyte of memory. It also runs only 16-bit code. We're actually fairly limited at this stage. So we have to load a little program called the bootloader. And the only responsibility of our bootloader is to put us into what's known as protected mode which will give us access to four gigabytes of address space. And then we will be running 32-bit code. So the bootloader's job, simply put, it loads our kernel into memory, switches the processor into 32-bit protected mode, and then executes our kernel. The bootloader generally uses functions available in the BIOS to assist itself. But we'll talk more about that later. So all you need to know is the bootloader's job is to load our operating system, to load our kernel. And we write the bootloader. So the BIOS loads the bootloader. The bootloader loads the operating system. That's all you need to know for now. So the BIOS gets executed directly from ROM. So as soon as we turn on the PC, it'll start executing from the BIOS's ROM. Um, the BIOS will generally load itself into memory so that it's faster. So the BIOS is also responsible for initializing mandatory hardware. It'll, it'll provide basic disk drivers to the hard disk and so on. So when the BIOS is finished doing its thing, it will attempt to load our bootloader, as I've already said. And it does this by searching all storage mediums for a boot signature. The 511th byte and the 512th byte should contain a boot signature, right? If the BIOS finds that signature, it will load that sector into address 0x7c00 and will then execute from that address, running our bootloader. So for example, storage mediums could include USB sticks, floppy drives, uh, if you're going back in the day, um, hard disks, right? So it'll go through all of these devices. It'll say, okay, load the first sector of the first hard disk. And just to let you know, a sector is simply a block of storage. So for example, on most hard disks, we have 512 byte sectors. So the first sector will basically mean that it will load from the first byte to the 512th byte. Does that make sense? But we can get more on that later. This is just an overview so you understand what's going on. So the BIOS will load the first sector of the first hard disk and it will take a look at the 511th and 512th byte. If those bytes match the boot signature 0x55AA, then the BIOS has found a bootable medium. And obviously then it will load that into address 0x7C00, as I've said, and it will start executing from there. So that's how that works. If, if the BIOS can't find a bootable medium, then they, it can't do anything else, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, bootable mediums come in all shapes and sizes. It can be the USB pen drive. It's only bootable if the first sector has a boot signature. And obviously our boot signature is the last two bytes being 0x55AA. 
So as I've said, once the boot sector is loaded, it will actually do an absolute jump to address UX 7C00 and begin executing our bootloader. So another thing to note is the BIOS is almost like a kernel in itself. It contains loads of routines for our bootloader to be assisted with booting our kernel. The BIOS is 16-bit code, which means that only when the processor is in real mode, the compatibility mode that I mentioned briefly a few minutes ago, will it be able to execute the BIOS properly. Because whilst it's in real mode, the processor is in a 16-bit state. That means that it's working with 16-bit values only. So, for example, if we work with a number, um, it, it will only be able to work with that number 16 bits at a time. And obviously, 16 bits is only 2 bytes, which means we can only uh, work with numbers up to 65,535 at one time. So, the BIOS routines are generic and are standard. So, all BIOSes follow a similar sort of interface so that they're compatible with each other. That means that any code that talks with one BIOS will be able to talk with another in the same way. So that's that for this lecture. I know that it's been a mouthful and you're probably confused, but um, you know, you're not going to learn all this in one lecture. This just covers basically what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, while we start developing our kernel. So this might seem like a lot to take in, but don't worry, you're not going to learn all of this in one lecture. I just needed to cover these things because as we progress through the course, a light bulb's going to go over your head and you're going to be like, oh, that's what he meant. That is how you're going to be thinking and it's going to be a great uh, refresher for your mind. So don't worry if you're confused, keep following the course those light bulbs will start appearing and if they don't you can ask me a question at any time.